All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about creating new isometric styles within 2016 AutoCAD Plant 3D. Uh, as you can see, I've got a uh, Plant 3D project already opened. And now if I go into my project setup, the project setup is where all of our controls and all of our modifications um, and customizations for our project is going to take place. One of the options inside of here on the left hand side of the tree is isometric drawing styles. If I expand that and we start looking through some of these, you can see the general uh, setup controls for an isometric style. If I expand the isometric style list, I see a list of all the out of the box isometric styles. Now new for 2016, there's gonna be two ways of cre initially creating a new ISO style. If I add, if I click on this plus sign, a dialog box will come up telling me uh, to create a new ISO style either by copying it from an existing style or creating a new one based off of the new 2016 uh, isometric wizard. Uh, the first one that I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy an existing style based off of uh, the ANSI final uh, B. We're just going to call this company underscore B. And now when I select create, you'll see that it is added to my list as an option for me to use. Now it literally just copied all of the other settings, the same um, border, everything that was used in the previous one was copied over for us to use here. Now if there are true settings that need to be modified, I would then want to step through this, which we'll talk about those options uh, later in this video. But I would want to go through here and make any modifications that differ this I B size ISO style versus the one that we copied it from. Now the second option, if, again if I select my create new ISO style button and I specify that I want to create a new style, in 2016 this is the new option. This isn't available in 2015 and older, this is only available in the 2016 versions. When I specify a new name, just like the other version, this is what it's going to be called. Now, if we're doing this in 2015, obviously we're not going to have this uh, new option. Uh, and also for 2015, I'm also not going to be able to delete any of the existing out-of-the-box isometric styles. So if I'm doing this in 2015, 14, 13, you guys are watching this video in order to uh, create a new ISO style, my recommendation is to put a period in front of the name so that it automatically puts it at the very top of the list. New for 2016, I can now delete those isometric styles and the project uh, manager will not recreate those when I open up that project again. So I'm gonna create a new ISO style. I'm gonna call this company underscore, we'll make this one a D size border. And then when I select create, because I'm not copying from an existing one, this wizard pops up for me. Now, this wizard is going to have multiple steps up here. You can see the first step that I'm on is specifying my paper size and layout. So I've got 10 options that I can cycle through. Right now, I'm on my ANSI B, and I've got a 1-inch strip at the bottom and a 4-inch area that's going to be designated for my um, uh, bill of materials, any of the cut sheets that we uh, will build in later. So as I step through these, you can see the B size options change. Once I get past that, it'll step up to the ANSI C size, and those layouts change, similar when I get to the ANSI D size. You can see I'm cycling through those. Uh, for this, we're just going to leave it on the, the default, and I'm going to step through to my next option. As we start stepping through our next option, we're essentially just creating a default for us to start from. Uh, then we're going to go out and just like we would in, the old, in 2015 and older, we would then go and fine tune some of these control options. Uh, so for the next option, I would cycle through, find which leader lines and enclosures I would want for this. Again, all of this can be modified um, after the fact. We're just kind of getting a base to start from. The next option gives me the dimension offsets of if I want them further out or the, the first one further and then smaller. So we can cycle through these and pick the ones that we want. Um, any of the default piping styles that we can specify here. Again, how we want to specify the branch connections if I want the center line there. Um, these are just generalized dimensions if I want everything dimensioned. 
Uh, if I want my fitting to fitting piping styles, how I want to control those, if I want to be very detailed or if I just want overall dimensions. Uh, stepping back through here, all of my small bore piping. Now we're going to be able to specify what is small bore piping. Out of the box, it's uh, defaulted to two inch pipe, uh, but we can control that and say maybe for uh, this specific discipline or this ISO style, I want small bore piping to be one inch or inch and a half and smaller. Uh, we can control that um, after we've created this ISO style. And then the last setting that we're going to cycle through is going to be the size of the symbols as well as the size of the tag that we see here for, for, our, um, for our annotation. Uh, as I cycle through here, it's just going to highlight these other versions. Now, again, the bigger we make these, the less room it's going to be able to, or to have to fit more isometric data on a sheet. So something to, to keep in mind that if you automatically default and say, well, I want my ISO symbols large, I want the callouts big, um, you may run into space issues if we're trying to fit a very complex um, isometric on one sheet or trying to fit it onto as, as minimal sheets as we can. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to go to you know the second largest, and here I'm going to select Create Style. Now at this point, it's going to look exactly the same as it did before when we created our company uh, B size from our final ANSI B. Uh, with this, we're going to step through some of these options to kind of go over uh, some of the modifications as well as some of the new uh, user interface changes that are new for 2016. Uh, by default, I'm on the first setup, and that's ISO, ISO style setup. Now, this is going to be for our formatting, uh, our naming options. I, I can change the way that I want my isometric to be named, uh, some of the spool naming options. All, some of my generic formatting is going to take place on this setting. Stepping through to the next ones, on our default settings, uh, this is newly added, um, and this was on the advanced uh, button for the Create ISO wizard. When you guys go and create your production ISOs, create your quick ISOs, in the bottom right corner, that uh, screen that pops up, that wizard, you will have an advanced button. This can now, be, all those options can now be defaulted and set up inside of the ISO style itself. Uh, so users by users don't have to go in there and modify it if they need to ch adjust the uh, congestion and you don't have users setting them up differently, you can set up a default for all the users to use as well as the date, the decimal places, all the general formatting that you guys would apply there. Uh, on the annotation, this is where we're going to control our tags and leaders. Now again, we set up a, a base rate of how we wanted that to, to um, display when we step through that wizard. But here we can actually control how we want those leaders to display, whether I do not want anything to display, if I just want a line with no arrow, as well as how I want that enclosure to look for my bill of materials. I would then step through and do the same thing for my tags my spools, and any cut pieces that I'd want to identify there. On the dimension sheet, the first tab, this first dimensions, this is what's going to outline uh, what is considered small bore piping and generalized dimension styling. Now everything inside the wizard can also be overwritten at this place. If I wanted to change that offset, so both of them are 5 eighths or both of them are 3 eighths, uh, I can change that here and it's going to override anything that I did in the wizard. Again, that wizard is just to give us a base rate for us to start building off. Now on my themes tab, which is new for 2016, this is going to be our dimension styles, how things are going to be di dimensioned. Do I want a string dimension? Right? I can toggle this on and off, and if we look up here, we can see those turning on and off. If I have them on, then I can say, well, I want my filled filled welds to be dimensioned and I want them to go to the center. I want blind flanges dimensioned and I want those to go to the end of that blind flange or the length of it or the center. Here I can be more specific about each component and how I am dimensioning those. Uh, so the dimension portion is stylizing uh, and then the themes is controlling those styles to determine exactly how we want to identify those dimensions. On sloped and offset, this is all the graphical representation of how we're going to display those slopes, uh, how we want to report on those, whether it's just a ratio or a degree. Uh, if we want a uh, skew triangle, if I want to step through and I want a, you know, more 3D, if we have a lot of rolled elbows, for instance, I can do add a 3D box 
or skew triangles to show exactly how this is um, rotated out. All of this can be controlled directly through here. The next option is going to be controlling the title block itself. Uh, we, as we step through here, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to uh, make modifications to those as well as set up any, um, make any modifications to the title block border and the geometry within that itself. The last option that we have identified here is going to be a PCF uh, isometric preview um, for this. Uh, sometimes this takes a little bit uh, while to sp spool up, especially if we don't have any geometric data inside of this um, project that we're working on. For me, I don't have any design data, no drawing files inside here, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while before that stops spinning me and tells me that there's nothing to preview inside of there. Uh, so this is a quick tutorial on creating a new isometric style inside of 2016. Uh, I hope this was a helpful video. Bye.